if I had to describe the department with one word, I would use the word alive. Concordia du département de communication, j'ai de bons souvenirs, euh, des souvenirs d'esprit d'équipe, des souvenirs du département, de l'ambiance euh, qu'il y avait dans le département. Une belle ambiance, chaleureux. I've known a lot of students over the years, and many of them have returned, and, and they feel a sense of community and a sense of family in the department. You spend three years of your life with these people in class, doing your projects, doing their projects, there's a bond that forms. Lights uh, in the Bryan building burn until God knows what hour. Uh, there seems to be uh, no, uh, no limits to the energy that the students have, and there wasn't then, and there isn't now. The department was really founded by Father O'Brien, Father John E. O'Brien, who had a vision about communication studies being a form of literacy that we really needed to understand. And he was really the person, I think, who was more far-reaching than, than most in terms of understanding what McLuhan was about, what Innes was about, the kind of tradition we have in Canada, and what implications that had for academic programs. And because of that, he founded the first Department of Communication Studies in Canada. The department was founded in 1965. We talked about the qualities that were there. I think the quality of life was important right from the word go. We weren't interested in giving an education that would turn out technicians. You could get technicians everywhere else. What we hoped to do was make our students or help them to develop a sensitivity to values in our society, to the kind of quality of life we all really want to lead, to a basic uh, ethical response to the key questions that are around us, all these kinds of things, and release the creative potential that was in them, or we wouldn't have any Canadian film, Canadian radio, Canadian television. Montreal was probably chosen as a location for several reasons, but I know one of them was the fact that it is bicultural and bilingual, and that that aspect of the city has a great deal to contribute to an understanding of communications in Canada. I think we can't work in a place that's called the communication if we're not capable of communicating in a country bilingual or two languages. We have to be capable of speaking the French and the English. Well, I think there have been lots of changes in the department. Uh, in some ways, and yet in other ways, uh, things have not changed at all. I think people who were here in, in 75 when I first knew them come back 15 years later and it's like walking into a time warp and there are a lot of uh, people who are still here that were here back then uh, on the other hand there have been changes there have been additions uh, to the department in terms of programs the joint programs with journalism the MA program and the PhD program from its inception the people who founded this department always insisted on an integration of theory and practice we insisted on it in the coursework, in the curriculum, even in the hirings of faculty to teach. We wanted people who could handle theoretical issues, but who could also know what it meant to put together a radio production or a television show. And I think that the air aspect of always involving people in production or laboratory areas at the same time as theory areas has led to, as well, a kind of spirit de corps within the department. It's a sort of enthusiasm and a creativity um, a joy in being part of this, you know, the extending of human communication and all its potential. And that's heady stuff. That's exciting, interesting stuff. Qu'est-ce que j'ai appris ici? J'ai appris que les communications, c'est ce que je veux faire. C'est euh, vraiment la télévision qui m'intéresse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, ready on the floor. Ready to roll VTR. Roll VTR. Fade up on VTR. Okay, nice. Hopefully, when I graduate, I'll be working in film, so I wanted to study, study here. Um, I decided to come to uh, Communications at Concordia because 
it has a good mix of practical and theory. Other schools, you know, you just do film or you mm. just do theory, but this was one of the only places where you could do both. I remember struggling over cuts that didn't work and, uh, you know, in the editing process, figuring out all the mistakes that I had made in the shooting. The fact that we could really hold our own cameras and cut our own film and do it all was really, really fun. After I left Loyola, I never got to touch anything again. I, mean, I made films and I directed films and I've edited films, but I never got to touch it again. Because once you're doing things professionally, you don't. There's someone who will shoot for you, there was someone who will cut it for you. I mean, you have to say where and when and what you want, but you never get to touch the, the uh, actual technical stuff again. Ce ne sont pas des uh, uh, les questions uh, techniques ou des choses techniques que j'aurais appris là, uh, en concordia là, là. C'était vraiment, je pense bien, c'était tout l'aspect plus uh, humaniste, là, façon de voir les choses. C'est ça qui m'a servi. C'est pas le fait que j'ai appris à faire un, un zoom in ou un pan ou que j'ai appris un certain vocabulaire parce que voilà faire le vocabulaire technique là ou comment faire partie d'une machine VTR. I've gotten a work ethic from this department that if you want to do something, you may as well do it right the first time. So you work hard and once it's done, you can you can look back upon it and be proud of what you've created, if you will. And I think that's that's a, a feeling or a sense you get from a lot of the production classes here, and as well from the the, the, the theoretical classes. You, if you're going to do something, make it worthwhile. Do something right. Do something good, and don't just do schlock. What I'm really interested in is in multimedia, which is um, which is <coughs> combining computers with uh, visuals, moving images, sound, graphics, text. And I think what really got me into it is um, Professor Haltwaite, who introduced me to this multimedia business. We're contending with the uh, increasing division between the real world and the kind of uh, world that exists in academia, and uh, trying to bridge that gap. And that's the news, weather, and sports from Radio Canada International. I'm Carmel Kilkenny. <laughs> I did a lot of things in sound, so that's what I do now. I'm an announcer, so I'm a lot more comfortable in front of a mic and, and doing that. And it's always, probably was always what I secretly deep down wanted to do, but I didn't really know that either, so I had to go through communication studies to figure that out. I walked into a, a job that lasted for 17 seasons, so I, I ended up writing and eventually directing for Sesame Street that for the first 17 seasons in Canada, so it was really... Uh, really a chance uh, and um, in fact if I hadn't had the course probably I wouldn't have been there. There are a lot of techniques that I've learned, a lot of techniques that I've retained, des cours qui m'ont aidé et qui m'aident dans, dans mon travail de tous les jours, les cours de télévision avec une pause que j'ai pris, les cours de visual dynamics aussi beaucoup avec euh, Denis qui me servent tous les jours dans mon travail. Students have remained essentially the same. They're always very interesting and very challenging and I think that's the important part for the teaching side of things is to meet those challenges and constantly try and challenge the students. I think if my students leave the department, the one thing that they should have is perhaps um, a sense or a grasp of where the media are going and how they are going to be an even larger or even greater influence in the world. I've just uh, gotten a better outlook on the media itself. I've, I'm better informed about what's out there and how to approach it visually, theoretically, intellectually. Puis euh, je peux dire que à date mon cordium a appris tout ce que je sais sur les communications, maintenant il me reste euh, à aller mettre ça en pratique sur le milieu du travail. And I meet grads everywhere and uh, we get together for a pizza or a beer or something and we talk about what they're doing. They're in management, they're in film, they're in television, they're in radio, they're in journalism, they're you name it. And uh, you know, I, I think they still have some of that enthusiasm that they had when they were with us. They haven't lost it.